Well, hello, everyone. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome back to our backstage event. We are exploring a very unique degree. Uh, it is from Duke Fuqua. And the name of the degree is a Master of Science in Qual Quantitative Management. Now, uh, all you quants out there, I know you're going to love this, but even some of you poets uh, might get a kick out of this because obviously data analytics, business analytics has become extremely important uh, and in wide use uh, throughout the world. You know, uh, companies are swimming in overwhelmed with tremendous amounts of data and their goal is to harness it to make it effective for decision making that's smarter and part of this program, actually a core part of the program, is learning how to make that happen. So we have with us today two terrific guests, uh, Meredith Bolin, the Associate Director for Analytic Careers. I love that title because it tells me how on the pulse the career management folks are at Duke Fuqua. And we have uh, Jeremy Petranka, the Associate Dean of two uh, programs. And the one in particular, obviously, that we are going to talk today about is the MS in, MSQM. We'll, we'll use that acronym, but first I'm going to explain one more time. A Master's of Science in Quantitative Management. He's also Associate Professor of the Practice of Economics. Welcome. Thank you so much. And we need you as our hype man more often. <laughs> So this is a program um, that is uh, 19 months long. It is online, although it starts with a weekend residency on your campus uh, in North Carolina in a beautiful location, I will tell you, uh, on one of the great uh, college campuses, Duke University. And uh, it's composed of course modules, uh, live weekly classes, individual and team-based assignments. Uh, and when you graduate from this program, you will be an analytical whiz. Am I right, Jeremy? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Pretty much what you said is on the money that uh, this program in particular, probably the best way to think of it is take the foundational and leadership uh, and communication pieces of an MBA, mix that up with some of the more, uh, the significantly more modern uh, analytical techniques that we've been seeing kind of transform industry in the last 10 or 20 years, put it in a bag, shake for about 19 months across five terms, and you pretty much have what, what we're aiming for and kind of how we design the program. Yeah, and I'm glad you, you mentioned that because a lot of times when you hear oh, it's a master's in quantitative management, you, you think, okay, that means I'm not going to learn any of the soft skills that are crucial to your success in any corporate environment. Uh, and not only is that a core part of the curriculum, you also have a voluntary immersion, a weekend residency that one can go to on leadership uh, after the first two 12-week terms, which is really cool as well. Now, what do you give me a sense of what a student is going to experience who signs up for this? <laughs> am I gonna am I gonna like ever see my spouse uh, or my children? Am I ever uh, you know how am I gonna balance my workload with with this rigorous curriculum? So I'm happy uh, to say that the answer should be yes. That that uh, we will never claim that that an online program or any working professional degree. Whatever claim it's easy. I'm uh, my wife actually has a got her MBA as a working professional, so I've been able to see it from that side of things on what that actually looks like. But it, there's definitely um, you know it's generally designed for ten to twenty hours a week um, that that you'll be focused on it. We the way the classes are structured, um, even to the point that the weekend classes, it's not every week. You have all your classes it's actually every other week, and then we stagger them. Um, doing that with, with the recognition that Fuqua has been, you know, we were really lucky that we have decades of experience kind of in the working professional world and understanding what works, what doesn't work, which, you know, completely overwhelming your students <laughs> and is not something that works very well. 
And so it's, it, you know, it definitely requires focus. It definitely requires, you know, communication at home and, and kind of understanding, but it ends up being quite manageable. And then you nailed one of the pieces that, that really kind of links into it is there's also these additional opportunities throughout to kind of form that deeper community um, to the degree that each student uh, really wants to and wants to be part of the, the, the bigger people community and do community that we ultimately want to build. And it's a relatively new program. How long has it been around? So we've been in the online space for decades, but it's never been fully online until 2018. So this was the first time that we actually uh, took the leap and, and had it fully, um, fully where you know, there was no required in-person component. Uh, the first class graduated then in 2019. 2020 would have been <laughs> the answer to that question. So we're in our, depending on which program you're looking at, the, the third or fourth year, we actually have three programs under the MSQM umbrella, uh, depending on whether you have an MBA and where your focus wants to be, that the, and get ready for a lot of, uh, a lot of initials, the MSQM HA, which is healthcare analytics, that is surprise focused on healthcare. <laughs> and what we recognized, that was actually the first program we launched is in that sphere, there's so many idiosyncrasies in terms of regulations, in terms of data rules, in terms of what data exists, that it made sense to have a cohort and class focus just on that. And so it's this really dynamic and amazing blend of clinicians, people from the pharma industry, the insurance industry, nurses, um, you know, all together kind of talking about these, these techniques and learning them, mm. which is really, it, it works really well. We then wanted to have a less specialized one. So then we have MSQM BA, which is business analytics. And that's the broader one. That's for managers. They really want to get a better idea of the different ways it's being used functionally. So whether it's fraud detection or digital marketing, you get that much better feel. And then for students that already have an MBA, we actually have an accelerated version, which is only 11 months and three terms. So it's actually a much quicker piece where those elements of the MBA that I talked about, the foundational pieces and some of the leadership pieces, well, if you have an MBA, you already have that. And so you basically get course credit for that. And then it's really focused on the upskilling of those more quantitative tools. Right. So a lot of different options for different kinds of people and different kinds of goals. Now, Meredith, Absolutely. who's generally who's generally attracted to the program and who do you think it best serves? You know, we have a tremendously wide range of students, and um, usually what drives people is the desire to, to learn these techniques, to learn them more deeply, to be a better stakeholder to an analytics organization, or to be a data literate, uh, data fluent leader. And so depending on where students are in their career, whether they have, you know, three to four years of experience or 25 years of experience, we have a pretty good matrix understanding for domain, age, and stage of, of what the students want to accomplish. And as Jeremy described in the academic space, we have a similar approach to the career space. It really is a buffet. There is no part of what we're doing in the career space that is required because we recognize that people who are early in their career, who are looking to progress, who are looking to change, can upskill and then use this foundation to leverage into their next space. Mid-career professionals can deepen their fluency in these spaces. In the health space, we found that most of our students are really looking to progress. They're not always looking to change jobs. They're just looking to take these skills on as the world has changed. Similarly, other mid-career professionals, they're looking to be more data fluent because they are the stakeholder of analytics. They're looking to do a little bit more self-service. Um, so whether students are looking to remain in their, you know, in their current role, to progress or to change, um, we have options both academically and in the career space for those students. And we even have some very senior leaders that just love learning and see that there are people in their organizations that are deeply engrossed in this work and that their data fluency is critical to their being very senior leaders. So for those individuals, this presents a really nice option too. And we facilitate in the second term an 11-week career experience that lays down both philosophical, um, strategic kinds of um, knowledge transfer, as well as skills, the tactics that are associated with the job search. And we have a team built with um, employer relationships and with executive coaching so that whatever configuration our students want, 
they can plug into that. We record everything. It's all asynchronous. But we also facilitate, we do this for all programs at once, and we facilitate breakout mingling after all of these career experiences, because we know that also part of what helps students make choices for themselves is getting to know other students. Um, And sometimes they come into the program and they have different goals because the people they meet and what they learn um, makes them become interested in different things and enables them to do different things. It qualifies them for different things. So we try to create a community in the career conversation that enables a very wide range of individuals to define and pursue their goals throughout the program and beyond. And even given the diversity, we can talk a little bit about the class profile, uh, even though we're talking about averages and those averages clearly don't capture the full breadth and diversity of the class you just noted. You know, when I look at it, 31 uh, 31 is the average age, yeah. <laughs> uh, eight years of work experience is the average work experience. 32% of the students are international from 10 different countries, you have students from 16 different states. Here was a surprise for me, you know, as a tried and true poet who's afraid of quant work, uh, I would never have assumed you achieved gender parity in your program, but you mm-hmm. clearly have. Which oh, really yeah. Surprised. I mean, it is an incredibly diverse space and the kinds of work that people do in this space really attracts a great range of people. And in all our programs, we have, you know, half or more um, women. And there's a it's a very, very diverse group. And I think it's not just the domain of the historic quant. Analytics is the marriage of poet and quant because data storytelling is what all the employers want out of these professionals. It's like understand the business context and problem, configure and conduct an analysis and interpret and deliver the insight for diverse audiences. And so in that intersection is really um, a a skill set and a mindset for everybody and um, work that appeals to this incredibly broad range of individuals. The other thing I really like about the program is you're not, you know, scaling it to the point where no one knows anyone. In fact, you've kept it intimate, small. Uh, so that the learning experience is very intense and everyone knows everybody. Uh, now, the class profile said the average class is around 38 students. Is that roughly right? So, yeah, it is. And that, that's actually, um, you had mentioned something before that, that was kind of keyed into the idea that why we can have this sort of sense of community and, and why we can really target the types of students that want this experience is we have no intention of, you know, going to scale. Um, it's not. It's not what Fuqua is. Um, we've never been. Uh, you know, the the low cost volume player. We we know what we are, and what we are is that sense of community that's at the core of the kind of Team Fuqua idea that that you'll hear across all of our programs. Um, everybody, every student in this program will be known not just by their classmates but also by their faculty members. Uh, they, they actually, in some cases, know them better than, than some of our other programs, but also by the, the program team, um, that they're every, and obviously the career team, that, that it really is a personalized, you know, it, it's one, one thing I say is, you know, it, it's, it's not online, it, it's, it's Fuqua online. It is a fundamentally different thing and we designed it to be fundamentally different. Yes, even though it's online, there's opportunities for you to be more engaged in person, but more importantly, we've provided the structure and the support that you, same thing you get. In fact, much like Meredith, the same people you get in the in-person, uh, in the in-person experience. And, right. and there's no intent to ever change that, that, that we know, you know, we know what we want to, what we want to deliver for students. Now, Jeremy, if I had the chance to come to campus, uh, take a few students out to a bar, have a few drinks, what I would ask them w- would be this. What are the things about this program that truly resonates with you, things that you will remember long after you graduate? What do you think they would tell me? So after they wax poetic about how amazing their dean is, they would probably turn <laughs> into other areas. And I think there's, there's probably going to be three things. One is that you know the faculty same faculty we have in all of our programs. Um, yeah. you know, there is no separation. We do actually bring in some industry folks in this that we don't have in our other programs. You know, we have chief data officers teaching in this program, which is really kind of astounding the level of industry 
connection we have um, within this. That said, the fact that, again, the classes are small and they actually get to know their faculty members on those weekend sessions and the faculty members can bring in really, you know, news of the day, how, how trends are changing. That's important. So we always hear the, the fact, you know, anytime we talk to students, tell us about your experience. It starts with faculty. At some point, they'll get the faculty is great. It normally starts, though, with the classmates. And again, mm -hmm. this, this has to do with, with staying small. Um, the fact that our admissions process is effectively the same admissions process we have for, for all of our programs in terms of very high touch, very um, helping students, uh, especially the students, that, that it's really aligned well for them, helping them achieve where they wanna go. But it, it's, it's incredible, the, the, the backgrounds, the talent, of the classmates we get. And, and because people come to Fuqua, because they want that collaborative piece that, you know, we are the business school, you don't come to climb on top of people, you come because we push each other up and we actually will celebrate each other's kind of victories. It, I mean, it's really palpable here. And so you end up feeling this sense of community and, and forming relationships that are well beyond what you might expect, you know, if you think online program, and then that connects right. to the last piece, which is that, that sense of community and support that, that we really do every student. We have a good idea of what you want, where you want to go, how we can help. And we're pushing as we move forward, you know, as, as we learn more to just develop that sense of community even more strongly to make it so that not just you know people in your program, but inside of all of MSQM, but also across all of our other programs. And we're having a, a data visualization intensive coming up in about a month where it's not only gonna be students across all of our programs, but also we're gonna have our executive MBA students from all of those programs all gonna to be together um, to just to develop that FUPA community even more strongly. That's great. I wanna go back to Meredith's title because I'm intrigued by it. Associate Director for Analytic Careers. Yeah. Um, is, is the demand for people with analytical skills greater than it's ever been? And that's that mm -hmm. suggests the why you have this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why I have a job. I had a career in consulting. I have an MBA. I got involved at Tuqua as a, a, an MBA career coach. And when Fuqua launched the full-time analytics degree in 2017, they thought there'd be 30 people. There were over a thousand applications. The class had 130. So we now have over a thousand alumni from this portfolio of degrees. And so my job is program director of this analytics portfolio in the career domain. And, you know, we develop and deliver um, a suite of services and resources to the students across all of our degrees to help them define what their interests are, to learn about what's out there, and to go to market in a way that meets their goals, and to connect them with each other. As Jeremy said, you know, across the programs, across all of Fuqua programs, across Duke's analytics programs, which exist in other parts of the university environment, and longitudinally with our alumni. You know, we mm -hmm. now have these year-over-year -year relationships. And so regardless of where you are in the maturity of your career, there are people in the market from Duke, from Fuqua, and from our analytics degrees that represent potential relationships and contacts and support. So my team... Um, you know, designs and, and delivers these programs and resources across this portfolio. Now, that's another thing I want to underline here, because, you know, many people assume that if you do an online degree program, you're going to get very little career support, very little career development. But yeah. in a high quality program at a great school like Fuqua, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. And you refer to coaching, for example, uh, mm -hmm. your title suggests that people can use this program not only to advance in their own companies where they're employed, but also use this program to help them transition into a new career. Yeah, that's right. I'm part of a team of 35 at the Fuqua School, and then that's cut up between sector focus and employer focus and um, audience focus. But I collaborate a lot with my colleagues to try to bring together resources that make sense for the analytics audiences and, right. and to facilitate engagement where our um, work and our students' interests touch others. 
And right. it's not it's not just while they're here either. That one of the one of the amazing things that our CMC does is once you're a student at Fuqua, you always have access to our mm -hmm. career resources. And so you always have someone that you can reach out to to help with negotiations to see if we know anybody that are connecting in. And that, that is also part of that, you know, part of that offering, which they are honestly some of the best in the world at. Yeah, Fuqua Career Service, Alumni Career Services are for life, and I have a colleague that oversees Alumni Career Services, and we have um, programs designed for our alumni, and our coaches and our career people are present at alumni events, um, virtual and in person, and around the world. Um, our coaches go to our Fuqua Around the World Day um, just to make ourselves available and to continue that longitudinal community as um, graduates progress through their careers. Now, tell us a little bit about the graduates of the program, what kinds of careers they can pursue with a degree. <laughs> well, as Jeremy said, we don't have that many, but I think I alluded to it earlier. What we're finding is that students are either in the program or just after the program looking to pursue a new employment opportunity as a result of the skills and knowledge they've gained in the program, or they are working within their current environment to take on more responsibility, to pursue a promotion, to gain mentorship, to increase the scope of their current work, to deepen the substance of their current work. Um, so we're seeing that because this is a working professional program, the timeline of when a person will make a job change is not like when you're in a full-time program and you approach graduation yeah. and you get a new job. So we're seeing people that are coming into the program, getting a new job in anticipation of what they're going to learn. In the middle, they're realizing something becomes of interest to them and they're pursuing that then. Um, as they approach the end of the program, they may be looking to make a change or they may have negotiated and navigated a change in their own organization. Some of them have tuition reimbursement and are taking advantage of that kind of benefit from their current employer. So the kind of things I would say, just to summarize, uh, people are taking on greater technical work that the skills they gained in the program enabled them to do. They are taking on a broader managerial scope as a result of the data fluency that they gain in the program, um, or they are pursuing a new opportunity as a result of the master credential or the complement of the analytics degree with an MBA or a prior business master that they may have in our accelerated program. Now, what or they're just really like glad they understand data and can bring in that data-driven <laughs> mindset you know, to their leadership position. We have some very senior folks that recognize the, the importance of this um, topic and of being able to be a data-driven leader. And so for those folks, they're just getting better at their jobs. Good point. Now, what do you think employers most appreciate about your students? So employers tell us that the ability to um, apply analytics techniques in the business context and to deliver insight and stories and um, recommendations to the business that are backed by data um, is the biggest asset. And I will, yeah. and Jeremy, you tell me, because I think this comes out in the classroom also. Um, my perception based on the conversations I have with employers is it is that it is that data fluency or ability to manipulate data and to substantiate business decisions with data that is most meaningful to employers. No, you nailed it. That when we we were one of the, we were kind of one of the first um, kind of top business schools to really approach this domain more years ago than <laughs> and at this point time has no meaning. Um, but the reason that that we created the in-person version back in you know, 2014, 2015 is when we first started thinking about it. It was that is is we heard from industry over and over. There's no one that can connect our data scientists to our business. Like that that divide is just too big. And so we the fact that we built it in house in the business school. It wasn't put together from you know a few classes from here, a few classes from there. It's ours, and it was built from the ground up. The, the, all of our MQM programs and MSQM programs are designed with with that goal in mind. And in fact, if we didn't have that differentiator, then we would actually be failing what we were uh, what we were attempting to do. Now, Jeremy, as the head of the program, uh, who obviously I'm assuming helps to recruit faculty for it and brings the faculty together um, to basically provide a you know a holistic coherent experience through the 19 months of the program 
Uh, can you let us in on any surprises? Like, like, are there any super cool courses, super cool experiential learning opportunities, uh, th things that maybe, you know, you might not expect when you sign up for this? So, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, the question is surprises for us or surprises for the students. I think for the, for the <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the surprises for us, but for the students, <laughs> I think there are a few things. One is how much our focus is, is turned towards that sense of community. So besides during program launch, that's actually a weekend where everyone comes together. We do really the same type things we do in all of our programs. And that just jump starts that, that sense of community and then jump starts you with your first team that you're on. But then we have uh, two other optional in-person pieces. We have just social events online, um, anything ranging from uh, trivia night to potentially you know, guests guest presenters, everything that happens in the, in the CMC, where there is not just the content, but also the connection. There's a surprise at how much you can make it feel like a community in a strictly online space. I think that's that along with um, how close you can get to somebody, even if you haven't met them in person, when you are put in that team environment across multiple classes, across multiple terms, to really, you know, to have each other's back and to support each other. It, it you know, if, if people come in thinking it's just, you know, online, I just do my work, I don't have to talk to anyone. It's no, that's not it. Um, it really is, we, we, we want this to be, and it is a Fuqua program and everything that our values stand on, stands on this. And I think it'll, it'll surprise people to know that, that how much focus we have on it, but then also um, how we hope that we're, we're you know, at least uh, achieving that to, to the degree, or at least some degree that we want to. What is the application process like? So it's with any of our programs at Fuqua, uh, people should know that you shouldn't think of our admissions counselors as gatekeepers. You should think of them as Sherpas, that their job is really to guide you through the process, that you can reach out to them early. Um, you can tell them if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you're not sure about anything. It really is a holistic, uh, a holistic approach to application. Um, if, if you don't have a strength in one thing, do not let that stop you from applying. We want whole people and we want their full authentic selves. So you might be more of a poet and that'll come through and that's perfectly fine as long as we see some of those leadership pieces we want to see, some of that drive we want to see. It's, you know, we will teach you the other pieces. We will help you with the support you need for the others. So just know that at least for us, our application process is the opposite of scary. Um, in fact, it's a lot of times some of the some of the people that students get closest to are actually their admissions counselors, <laughs> where they will literally go to graduation. And I should note that the program starts every September. There are nine rounds of deadlines. The next deadline is May 4th. You have one on June 1 and then another in July. Uh, so there's still a chance to actually enroll this September. Yep. Uh, and, and I'm assuming because there are so many uh, deadlines that basically it's pretty much a rolling admissions process. Get your application in. The earlier you get it in, the better, because you may be eligible for a scholarship and, uh, you know, attack when the, um, when the treasure chest is at its highest point. Uh, if you want a scholarship and otherwise, uh, Jeremy, how should someone uh, reach out and contact you if they're interested in the program? So you can always just you know, Google our admissions office. If you want the mouthful of uh, email address, it's msqm-businessanalytics-info at fuqua.duke.edu. That said, I would just Google Fuqua and MSQM and you will find how to contact our admissions office. We will, uh, you, you can't miss us. Okay, terrific. Meredith, I'm going to give you the last word because you are a coach. I want oh, you yeah. to give, yeah, I want you to give advice to anyone who's interested in the program. How do I know I'm a, a right, the right fit for this program? I think that's a feature of the admissions dialogue. And I think I would encourage anybody who is watching this um, to, to reach out to the admissions team, to talk about where you are in your career, to talk about what you're interested in, what you're good at, what you like to be good at, because that process in some cases helps shape the experience that you have in the program, because it really helps crystallize, you know, what is your current state? What are your goals? And then how can you use this um, degree to, 
step toward those. Terrific. Meredith, thank you. Jeremy, thank you. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you, John. John, always a pleasure. And for all of you out there, I hope you uh, got a really good deep dive into the program, what the possibilities are, who's best suited for it, what you're going to learn, what the experience will be like. Um, this is a real quality operation and uh, people who are involved in it are very dedicated to it. Uh, and the students are remarkably engaged, even when they are virtual, uh, because the technology permits that and the commitment of the faculty uh, allows that magic to happen. So thanks for watching, everybody. This is John Burr with Poets and Quants.